Pastor Steve and the worship team for earning your eternal rewards in front of us. We are blessed. It's cold outside, isn't it? Amen. Nice in here, though. Uh, people keep asking if they have days like this in Oregon, uh, in parts of Oregon, but not where we were at. I just never got this cold, so uh, here we are in Oklahoma. Enjoying it. Uh, let us leave the elementary teachings about Christ and go on to maturity. Let us leave the elementary. Let, let us go on to maturity. I, I want to talk to you uh, this morning. Something I, I started talking about last Sunday. We were here last Sunday. You got three sermons uh, all together, but uh, uh, it's, it's something that I have uh, the last few years ended up making a habit of doing at the New Year's uh, time. For New Year's is that time when you reflect. Uh, reflect back upon uh, how the previous year went and uh, then you think about the future and the plans that you would make. Uh, what, what are your plans? And so uh, I want to talk about that for the next few Sundays. Uh, and as far as I know, I'll probably do it every year until the Lord tells me differently. I don't, I don't know. I don't make any promises that way. But uh, uh, here, here's kind of my theme verse uh, for the uh, for the next few messages. Boom, boom, boom. Let us leave this slide and go on to the next one. Okay. Boom, 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 boom. The blink. There we go. Hmm, that's interesting. All right. Uh, in Second Timothy one six, as those slides getting ready to come up. And it's such a beautiful slide, too. I can't wait for you to see it. Uh, <laughs> all right, one more time. Here we go. Boom. There we go. There we go. There we go. Don't you like the graphics? Uh, fan into flame the gift of God which is in you. Fan into flame the gift of God is in you. That, that, that's an interesting verse to me. Because it, it really talks about two parts of my spiritual walk with God. But there is the gift of God. The, the gift of God. And really, that short phrase includes so much. You know, the whole history of the Bible is the record of God doing something to bring you to Him, uh, into relationship with Him. I mean, that, that's the Bible. It's, it's God's gift to you. And then that, of course, includes uh, the work that Jesus Christ did on the cross, and that, that includes uh, the work of the, the Holy Spirit. Uh, it is a gift that uh, I did not earn or deserve and that you did not earn or deserve. If I make one thing clear, I want that to be very clear this morning. In fact, uh, let's read a very familiar verse together. Uh, let's read it together. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the what? The gift of God. It's by grace that you have been saved. And it is very, very important that you understand that. And it's very important that you understand that, uh, that whatever I talk about, in the next few weeks, it's, it's not a way for you to curry favor, to curry the salvation of the Lord. Uh, what God did, He did, not because I deserved it, or you deserved it either. Amen. Amen. It, it is just simply a loving gift of the Lord. But, there, there are two sides to that verse. There's the gift of God, and then there is my responsibility be encouraged the growth of that gift that's within me. Fan it into flame. Fan it into flame. And, and that brings up a very familiar picture. Anybody who's been by a campfire knows how it is to sit by the fire and it's beginning to die, the embers die. And so uh, you sit down beside it and you blow into it or you take the paper uh, towel that you had uh, with a little bit of, of uh, barbecue sauce left on it and you start fanning the flame, you know. And after you're fanning the flame, then the, uh, the, the flames begin to kick up and, and, and the fire renews. Uh, the gift is the flame. Uh, the gift is uh, God's presence in your life. The gift is the Holy Spirit working in you. The gift is the fruit of the Spirit that, that is a result of, of my relationship with the Lord. It is the character of Christ in me. But there is the fanning the flame. And the fanning of the flame is anything I can do to encourage 
the growth of that flame within me, anything that I can do. So here's my first point on your uh, very important outline. Spiritual growth is a partnership. It's a partnership. There, there's my part, and then there's the part that he expects me, he wants me to do in my relationship this morning. And, and so this morning I want to, to talk about, begin talking about some of the uh, spiritual disciplines, and this morning I'll kind of talk about them in general, and the next few weeks we'll, we'll go on to some more specific things. And <clears throat> there are some things that you really should know about me. Uh, uh, number one is I do not pretend to be any kind of expert in, in the area of spiritual disciplines. That word discipline was never one of my favorites. Uh, growing up, uh, my mother occasionally would discipline me. Maybe that's the association with the word. Uh, thank the Lord she was there to guide this little preacher kid along. But uh, when I think about discipline, often I think about a, a, a routine and regulations and, and whatever else might come to mind when you think about kind of some kind of regimen. Now, there are some of you out here, uh, I do understand you, but you love that. Uh, that fits in your personality. You, you find comfort, you find security in maintaining a daily discipline, a daily routine and regimen. Uh, 411, I'm not one of them. <laughs> I am the kind of personality that kind of likes that spice of life, you know. Um, you know, that, uh, things a little different. Um, and though I, I think, in my old age though, I, I learned to appreciate uh, the matter of discipline and routine a lot more. Not that I'm some kind of free spirit, you know, running around crazy like, but, but the area of discipline is something that I have grown to appreciate. And I've already confessed to you more than once, and I'll probably continue to do it until it stops hurting, and it still hurts, that, I, that in my previous walk, Lord, uh, I sadly lacked in the area of prayer. And I would put on top of that Bible reading. But I have made some changes in my life. Some definitive, definite changes in my life. And again, I'm not pretending to be an expert. But what, one of the reasons I share that with you so that you can understand that this guy that is soon to be 57 years old, less than 57, great year to be born, by the way, and uh, great year for Chevys and babies, by the way, and uh, <laughs> that's a joke, come on, go with me, go with me. Uh, if, if I can learn and change and develop, then I think that you can too. You can too. And so I'll be sharing with you uh, in one of these messages some of the practical steps and, and along the way I took uh, in order to make those changes. And so the next few Sundays, I especially want to talk about the subject of prayer, a topic that has become more dear and near to me than it has in the, in the past two years. And two Sundays from now, I'm, I'm really going to take some practical look at, at what I have done. But uh, a big part in those steps, that are practical steps I took, is setting some yearly goals for myself. And, and again, this was an area in my life that was very foreign to me. Very foreign to me. Uh, and I have in the past uh, made some New Year's resolution with uh, a, a great deal of uh, failure, I would say, uh, lack of success in the area. But I have written out some goals to myself, and, uh, and I gave them to you. Uh, I gave him my goals. What I did was, you have an insert in your worship folder, and some of you have probably been reading them already because you're just kind of like that. Um, uh, my past goals that I gave to my church last year. Uh, and then I shared them with my congregation. Now, I will tell you right off the top, uh, in a way of giving myself a little bit of an excuse, that uh, making a move has not been easy on some of those goals. In fact, some of them you can't do here. Uh, but... Uh, uh, some goals that I had for uh, 2012. I think I thought I kept a copy of that. Somebody gave me a copy of my own, my own goals and stuff last year. Here's my wife. She doesn't even know about me. She knows everything already. 2013. Yeah, I keep saying 2012, don't I? And here's what I... And I got kind of this, uh, this simple scoring system. Smiley face means I got it. I did it, pretty much, you know. You know? Hmm... Straight face, hmm, I, I did okay, but not the best. Sad face, total failure on, on this. 
Uh, and so these, these were my goals for this past uh, year, 2013. Uh, pray with Mary three times a week. Mm -hmm. uh, I did pretty good at that most of the time. We've been struggling with that since I've moved here. Pray one hour a day. I will tell you again that uh, this is something that is very important to me. And I have included my congregation at prayer time, but I, I can tell you that almost every day I spend an hour in prayer. And I don't share that, try not to brag, but to set as an example before you, and just so that you know your pastor is involved. And so this morning it was my privilege to sit down and, and spend time with the Lord and uh, spend an hour in prayer. And then part of what I do is, on this prayer time, is I pray for my family, I pray, I begin praying this morning, my prayer notebook for every family in the church, and by the Saturday, time Saturday comes around, I will finally get to Troy Zell. Uh, God bless him, he's the Z, he's my Z, uh, and I will pray for Troy, and it's kind of a good thing when I get to, get to pray for Troy, I'm finally done with, with the list, I've accomplished it all. Uh, Mary Lynn and I have listened to the Bible again the entire year, we're starting it again, and I was reading along the scripture, and I read it. I exercise 30 minutes a day, three times a week. You guys need to pray about that one. <laughs> Write three encouraging notes. I did sadly on that, and I'm, I'm going to keep uh, trying at that. Plan a date with Mary Lynn once a month. Did pretty good until we moved here, and but uh, uh, fix a meal for Mary Lynn uh, once, uh, uh, fix a meal and clean up once a week. I did kind of <laughs> on that. Uh, she can tell you, she might have a, smout, a frowny face on that. But uh, fast one meal a week, did pretty good there. Pray every day for their life cons construction of life fitness center. Uh, that was not an exercise center, but a, a multi-purpose facility. I did that until I moved here. Encourage others to pray once a week. That's a very simple one that we do. Uh, organize and re repair my home office. Uh, moving has a lot to do with organizing an office. And uh, <coughs> you go to my home office back there in, in Oregon, uh, it's very organized. It's very clean. Uh, right now. Clean out my physical files. Uh, you can pray about the cell of that office and the rest of the house around it, too. <laughs> Began a fourth men's leadership class. Hike to the bomb site. That's an interesting story. Uh, you can't do that here because you don't have a bomb site. Uh, well, you do have one. Yeah, okay, yeah, you do that one. I could hike to that one. Could have. Memorize Philippians 4. I didn't get that done. Organize a friend day at uh, Brookings Church of Nazarene. Uh, that I left before I got that one. Cleaned off my desktop. Moving has a lot to do with that, too. Have a sermon done by Wednesday. Oh, that's a hard one for me to do. Paint a large canvas painting. I started it. Intermit painting at an art show. It's not done yet. Planned another year's preaching plan. I got that done. Take 10 men, people to the Great Commission Seminar. I took several people, not 10. Organized four corporate prayer events. I uh, kind of did that, then I moved. And get away for a week prayer, calendar planning. Nope, didn't do that. Pray at least a half hour before turning on the TV or opening my computer. Oh, I'm not, not terrible at that. You know, you got your little laptop, your little tablet there, you see a, a thing on Facebook. Oh, somebody has a comment, you know, click on that. <laughs> now, I need to give my daughter and my son-in-law credit for transfer VHS family movies to digital format. They did that for me, but it still got done. <laughs> <laughs> now, review my goals every day. I did that really good until we, until we moved here. And, and those were all. So now I have just accomplished something that I set out to do in, in January of last year was make myself accountable to a congregation. Here's my list for 2014. I don't know if I'll read all the way through those. Pray one hour every day. Pray with Mary three times a week. Pray for my wife, my daughters, my son-in-law, future grandchildren. <coughs> Everybody here that's a parent should be praying for every one of the children every day. Amen. Everybody that's a grandparent should be praying for their children, grandchildren every day. Amen. Sometime, every day. If you, if you don't have grandchildren yet, you can get a step ahead of them. You see, God's in the future, isn't he? Amen. We can almost, it's almost like we are sci-fi. We can time travel through God's power and affect future events. Can we not? I mean, isn't that what the Bible teaches? I believe that. My prayer through God's power can help steer future events. So I'm praying for the salvation of my grandkids. I don't have any grandkids yet. But I'm praying for them every day. Every day. Uh, pray for every family in this church once a week. And you know, I've told you, I've cornered many of you. I'm still hunting some of you down and cornering you. 
But if you consider me your pastor of this your church, I want to pray for you. And I want to take your picture and pray for you. Listen to the Bible. Read through the chronological Bible. I started that, and some of you started it with me. How many of you are planning to read through the Bible this year? Raise your hand. Up. Raise your hand. Oh, man, that blesses me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Listen to another pastor's sermon once a week. That'll be hard, but I'll do it. You know, we preachers don't really like to listen to other preachers. We just soon lose ourselves. Fast one meal a week. Get away for time. Memorize Philippians four. Memorize Habakkuk. Sorry, I'm crying this week. Um, this is a very important verse to my mother, and I, I hope to see her soon. Go visit her. She's been in a nursing home and recovering from surgery, and she's not doing well. I talked to her yesterday. It's very sad. Sorry, I didn't. I didn't know that one catch you. <coughs> Organize a friend day at Lake Oak. You know, it's an old-fashioned idea, friend day, but it works. This is how it works. My pastor wants to have a friend day at church, and he's expecting me to invite somebody. Would you come to church? <laughs> You'll be surprised how many people have come. <coughs> Just because you invited them. And because we have a friend day, you're saying, okay, i got to find, find somebody. <clears throat> I'll find somebody. I'll invite them. And it works. It's amazing how it works. Organize three corporate prayer events. I want to organize. I haven't got permission to do this, but I hope they'll let me. Uh, a prayer walk. Uh, around the SNU campus before the beginning of the next school year. And I, I want to go to each building and pray for the heads of those departments and the people, the students and stuff. And uh, so I, I just told you guys that. I haven't told anybody at SNU that I'm going to do that. Uh, and if they say I can't do it, I'll do it anyway. Okay? <laughs> Another year of preaching plan. Clean, clean off my desk. Anyway, you can read down through there. Exercise. And, oh, I hate 21. So you look Lose 25 pounds. 25 pounds. I really didn't want to tell you that. Okay? But here I am, making myself accountable to you. And in January 2015, the evidence will show itself, will it not? All right. Now, I'm giving you permission to hold me accountable through the year. Uh, well, another good one there is uh, drive uh, the speed limit. I've kind of shared with you that I will drive the speed limit in town and only five miles over the highway or the interstate. Um, so when you pass me going 20 miles a mile over the speed limit, you can kind of give me a thumbs up. <laughs> and when I pass you when you're pulled over by the, the police, I'll be waving at you. See? But you can ask me, Pastor, are you driving the speed limit? And I'll be honest with you. Yes, I am. No, I'm not. Yes, I am. No, I'm not. Okay? Some fun things down there uh, as well that I'll be doing as well. Um, I give you permission to hold me accountable to this, my congregation. Um, I do not give you permission to give me your diet plan. Uh, because I've, been, I've done this before, and when you tell people you're losing weight, they come up to you and say, I got this great diet plan, I got this great diet plan. You know? uh, uh, you don't have that permission. You have permission to say, how are you doing on losing your weight? And I'll tell you, hey, yay, nay, oh, terrible. And I, uh, I, I'm telling Troy Zell he can no longer buy donuts for this church. <laughs> no, I'm not telling him, because then that, that would be, but those donuts, oh, they're of the devil, I'm telling you. <laughs> you to do for me for my birthday on February 3rd, actually on February 2nd, I would love you by February 2nd to fill out that piece of paper I gave you, two sides, and give me at least five goals for the year. Five goals that you have. Now they don't have to be spiritual. Some can be just fun, just fun things that you don't want to do. All right? And you make two copies. You got a copy you write, a copy you give to me, give Pastor Rick. You either put it in the offering plate on one Sunday between now and then, or you give it to me personally. All right? Here is the hard part, is that you've got to make those goals measurable. Measurable. I, I, you know, a simple one is people say, I want to read the Bible more. Okay, write down exactly how many chapters or how many verses you plan to read each day. Write it down. 
make it measurable. Uh, I have people say they you know want to be uh, more loving. In fact, uh, Barbara, where are you? Barbara, I'm picking on Barbara. I asked her permission if I could pick on her, and here she is. I'm in my office, and this slip of paper slides under my door. I hate that when that happens, Barbara, because generally it's not good news when they slide a piece of paper under your door. But she gave me her five goals already, and I commend you for being on top of it. So I'm going to read three of them. Okay, join Pastor Rick and Mary in reading through the Bible this year. That's measurable, very measurable. Memorize five verses on uh, the word uh, of, my, of my mouth. I don't understand the on the word of my mouth, but uh, you're going to memorize five verses. Okay, so you can say it. Okay, all right. That's measurable. Okay? Then she said, she writes, laugh more than I did in 2013. I don't know how you keep from laughing when married to a guy like Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Jerry, I got you in mixed in this. Because um, that's not measurable. How do you do that? I don't know exactly. Okay, memorize five jokes. Share with people. You know what I'm saying? Okay? That, that's a way to measure. She also says, love each person I meet today. I, that, that's, that's a little more measurable, but harder to measure. More, more easy would be to say, I will do one loving act towards a person a day. At least one. And then at the end of the day, you go, Hey, did I do anything loving? You know, Barbara's laying there in bed. Did I do anything loving? Oh, I forgot to do anything loving. Okay, I gotta go fix Jerry a meal or something like that. You know, <laughs> no, but measurable. What does it look like? See, the reason you want to make it measurable is so you keep track of it. And that—that's the challenge for me and, and for me. Did I do this, or did I not? And this would be a wonderful. Uh, a birthday gift for on your report. Now you get a star on your report if you add somebody that is going to hold you accountable. Anybody. A loving person, a caring person, and as I said last Sunday, quite often the not the best person to put on that, that, that name is your spouse. Sometimes it doesn't work so well when your spouse is the one who's supposed to keep track of whether you prayed or lost weight or things like that, you know. You need somebody who will be a loving, compassionate person. You get a minus star if you put my name there. <laughs> because while 230 people might keep, keep me accountable, it's hard for me to keep 230 people accountable. Somebody who loves and cares about you, who will join you in this journey. Uh, and so, uh, and one of the reasons I give you this report is so that come 2015, I'm going to tell my car, I will be here January, sometime in January 2015, and I will tell you how your pastor did. <coughs> Why is this important? Because I want to grow. I want to develop. I want to change. I don't, I'm not satisfied with just carrying on with my life here like this. I need to grow my knowledge of the Lord. I need to grow my compassion. I need to grow my, my prayer time with Him. I, I'm telling you, I'm no expert on prayer even now. I'm learning so much. Uh, so, uh, uh, here we are. So, uh, here's a key point for today. Get this. If you don't get anything else, get this. A spiritual discipline is anything that I do that will encourage me to become more like Jesus. Anything that I do. Anything that I do. That will help develop the character of Christ in me. You know, now I'll talk about the classics, Bible reading and prayer and worship and, and you know, meditation. I'll, I'll talk about those. But there is, there is uh, you can't number the number of ways that I can try to engage God's work in my life. Anything that I can do in order to develop the work of Christ in me. To grow spiritually means to live daily as Jesus would. Wouldn't you agree? To live Jesus, like Jesus worked. For we are God's workmanship. That, that word workmanship is, is beautiful. You are, you are his piece of artwork. And he's working on you. Created in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. God is working on you. And I'm in a partnership with him. The Bible promises that if comes a time 
I need to know what to say, he will give me the word to say. But if there's no fuel for the fire, if I'm not in the Bible, then how can he give me something to say if I don't know God's word? If I'm not developing time in it? So it's, it's me partnering together with him. Okay? Uh, so, let's go on. What does true spiritual development look like? That's the question you might be asking me. And if you were to ask somebody in Jesus' day, you know, who was the most disciplined spiritual person that they had around that time? I think, hands down, they would have said the Pharisees are the most spiritual people. They have the greatest spiritual disciplines. They are controlled. Uh, uh, they would look to them as the example. And yet we know, as we read the Bible, that Jesus looked upon them as anything but a grand picture of what it means to be a follower of God and one of his children. So there was this time in Matthew where Jesus is really basically taking the Pharisees to task, and he, he begins to rip them up for their practices and, and how they practice. And I, I think uh, there's a good kind of anti-lesson in there. What does spiritual discipline should look like and what it shouldn't look like? And so here we start out. Jesus then said to the crowds and the disciples, the teachers of the law and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. So you must obey them and do everything to tell you. But do not do what they do. For they do not practice what they preach. It's, it's almost like he's contradicting himself, Jesus saying. But basically he's saying, these men know the law, and the law is, is God's word. Certainly you have to adhere to the practice of the law. But the way the Pharisees practice God's word, you should avoid altogether. So that, that whole sentence right there would have shocked Jesus' listeners. They would have thought they were the prime example of what it meant to be a follower of, of God. And so here he says, verse 4, they, they tie up heavy loads and, and put them on men's shoulders, but they themselves are not willing to lift a finger to move. So maybe I should ask myself, do, do my spiritual pursuits encourage me, or am I growing weary of pursuing spiritual growth? A weary pursuing spiritual growth. Oh, what the... Pharisees were saying was, was putting a heavy burden on his people and it, it robbed all the joy out of following a, a, a relationship with the Lord. People, if there should be anybody who should enjoy life, it should be Christians, should it not? I mean, this should be a happy place to come to, right? You know, uh, Chase will tell you, you know, staff will tell you, one of my axioms of life is life should be fun and funny. I, I don't know, I don't really have a one Bible verse that says, thou shalt go and be funny. But I think it's fun to be funny, you know. Don't you chase your head? Life should be fun. Well, let's have a little fun on the way. And it, it, I don't know, if your spiritual walk with the Lord is, is a burden and it's heavy, then you need to reevaluate yourself. Now, I'll be the first to tell you that I don't get up in the morning and say, Glory to God, I get to spend an hour in prayer. You know, the first thing I want is a bowl of cereal or something. I usually put that off till afterwards. I almost always do. You know, because I know if I don't get that hour in when I get up in the morning, uh, I'll tell you, an hour in the morning is much shorter than an hour in the afternoon. I know how that works, but it sure is for me. Maybe it doesn't work that way for you. In fact, I'm not saying that you have to necessarily spend an hour at one time. I didn't even say you've got to spend an hour in prayer. This is something between me and the Lord. Sometimes I do it half an hour, half an hour later, I get an hour in. But I don't necessarily get up and say, glory to God, I get to pray. I resist it quite often. Now I'm tired. Now I just, oh, come on. So, but it's the discipline. But I will tell you that over these past three years, coming on four years now, it has brought a, a, a joy and a peace and a comfort in my life that, I, that I've not had before. Because I've, I've had that time of sharing with the Lord. Uh, going on, verse 5. Uh, everything they do is done. Is for, they do is done for men to see. They make their phylacteries wide and tassels on their garments long. The phylacteries were things they wore on their head that held the uh, Shema, the scripture in it. And they, you know, I guess the practice was to make them big and bold so that everybody would know that they were holy. 
and the, uh, the tassels were symbolic of, of their status in life. Uh, in our society, uh, shoulders, we put things on people's shoulders to symbolize status. A general wears his, you know, the people in the military. And that day, it was the, the hem of the garment uh, that was. And they, they had these tassels and they embellished them and so that you could appreciate what great holy men they were. They loved the place of honor banquets and most uh, important sit, seats in the synagogue. So, so here's the question. Do my spiritual pursuits help me become more humble? Or am I becoming more prideful? See, And as you and I consider what might be a spiritual development practice for, perhaps there's something I could do that would increase the quality of humility in my life. The Lord loves a humble heart. A humble heart. And I, th I think spirit Pharisees representing spiritual leaders need to take heart in that. You know, they, spiritual leaders have the most difficult time with this. Here I am, I'm talking to you about all the things I'm doing, and, and I have to be careful with my pride. So what can I do in order to remind myself to, to practice humility? Uh, they love to be greeted in the marketplace and have men call them rabbi, rabbi. So am I becoming more approachable? Or am I becoming more <coughs> exclusive? So often what we do to express our faith has a way of putting up walls uh, and barriers between us and other people. And, and certainly there are some times when I will not practice what the secular world out there practice. But this should be a place where all people feel welcomed. And, and am I practicing my faith and are my disciplines helping me to be a person that is more approachable, more open to the others around me, uh, going on. Uh, you blind guides, you strain, <laughs> excuse me, you strain at a gnat, or you swallow a camel. Someday I've got to draw that. I've got to draw that up. You know, I just imagine a guy trying to swallow a camel and some other guy next to him choking on a bug uh, to me. <clears throat> but Jesus was saying, you got your values all turned around. So am I becoming more aware of the fundamentals of our faith, of my faith? Or am I measuring my faith by superficial means? What are the fundamentals of my faith? Loving God and loving others. It's very simple. Loving God and loving others. And, and again, prayer and Bible reading and, and all that stuff is it, not an end in itself. It's a means to develop the love of God and the character of God in my life. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You clean the outside of the cup and the dish, but inside they are full of greed and self-indulgence. Am I becoming more authentic? Or am I becoming spiritually inauthentic? More authentic? So how do I do that? And many things I, I could do, but essentially I think I need to just, with the help of the Holy Spirit, stop and examine my life and say, Lord, how did, how did Rick Ring do yesterday? Were we in step? Well, there was that time. Hey, Lord, fill me with your spirit. Help me with the fruit of the spirit. Help me to be a man of love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and faithfulness and goodness and self-control, Lord. Help me be your self-control. Am I becoming more thing? So, the question is, is, is what will you do in 2013? 2014. Just translate it. You're here. <laughs> what are you going to do to progress? Did you progress in 2013? What will you do in 2013? What will you do to fan the flame, the gift of God within you? That's my challenge as your pastor. Again, here I am being pastor pushing. It, it, it is God who works within you. I love that verse. God is at work within you to will and to act according to his good purpose. I, I still have my will. I still have my will which steers my actions. But there's that gift of God that is working in me, and he's working in you. By the power of his Holy Spirit. God is developing you, training you, trying, and I am in partnership with him. Uh, I said last Sunday, the reason I put up the picture of the ship is uh, these spiritual disciplines, again, are not an end in themselves. They are a way 
for me to be ready when the wind of the Spirit moves. They are like the sail on a sail, the ship, sailboat. It's not the sail that moves the ship. It's the wind. So here I am, Lord. I want to be ready for the moment you want to use me, for the moment you want to develop me, for the moment I need strength. So I hoist the sail. I bring the word of God in my life. I talk to him. I share with him. I meditate on him. And then God moves. And I move along. Uh, fan into flame, people. The gift of God that is in you. Let us pray. Lord, uh, thank you for the gift. Thank you, Lord, for this uh, moment that we will receive these symbols of the great gift that you have given us by your death on the cross, Lord. We celebrate, we remember, we rejoice. In your name we pray, and together we say, Amen. I have my helpers, please come forward.